right, what's up? It's your boy JR, and we're in the studio today. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do a track breakdown of my song Shivers. Um, as you can see, this is it. Um, this is my first time doing this. I don't know what to expect really. I don't know if I'm recording the volume too loud or my microphone too quiet or something, or I don't know. But, anyways, let's just jump right into it. Let me uh, drag the uh, good old mixer over here and the. Uh, good old piano roll so we can get it onto one screen okay where do we start okay so the first thing that I did in shivers was um, make this bass line and uh, this like drum pattern plus the bass line so um, this bass is two serums it goes uh, and there's some pitch automations as well as sidechain but uh, this bass line is just repeats over and over for basically the whole song and it I don't think it really gets boring but it might so I don't know uh, so what it is there's the sub which is just a sine wave um, and yeah it's just low stuff there's a little bit uh, actually that's quite a bit of distortion on it uh, but it's just a sine wave of negative two and it sounds fine but there is a higher sine wave with less distortion on top of it and then there's no high on it I mean there's no low on it it's basically just all high so it kinda it kinda give, gave off a getter sub like trap sub vibe to me and so this is what it sounds like and it's just that over and over again and then I have this uh let me turn on the side chain so I just have this um this drum loop going over it And I don't know if that's too loud or not, but the original version of the track, which I sent into Subspace at first, it had way too much bass and it was way too loud. Okay, um, then later in this hat, this hat comes in and it's pretty, actually no, I don't know why I, I did this, but yeah, there's. And that hat is, um, so it's the hat is pretty cool, it just kind of changes pitch and stuff. Um, and now we have, I'm gonna go to kind of the two things that give this track some character. And this track really has a cold vibe to it, so like it kind of feels like you're just outside in the cold. Um, and that's due to two things. The first thing is this. Um, And this, that's the only sound that I didn't make with Serum. I made that with uh, with Spire, and that's uh, usually a plucky sound, but it's it's uh, drenched in reverb, and yeah, it's a, uh, oh wait, yeah, let me just open the reverb real quick. Um, it's, it's all wet, it's completely wet. There's no attack really, it has a long decay, and it's just, it just feels cold to me, and it has this kind of haunting melody that is not intricate at all. It just kind of sets the mood. So with that, we have we have this this pluck thing, which is the same bass sound as this, but with with um with a shorter attack and a with not the entire thing being drowned out also there has a lower hit and a higher hit and the higher hit is like very very shortly after it so it sounds more like a strum maybe and we have uh, this together with um, with some like with automation which brings it kind of out of the low frequencies and with that we have the second sound that makes this track sound really cool in my opinion and that is the shivers voice which i like to call it it is uh, a formant filter on some chord or what should be some chords like uh it's just 
Well, um, I could open it up. So the voice, this is actually, no, that's the thing. Hold up. Let me find the actual thing. Okay, here it is. This is the voice. It blows up the CPU, I guess, when I'm recording. But um, what it is, it's this cool unison saw wave um, with the with a envelope on the detune. Uh, so it kind of goes, ooh. And then this LFO is modulating the formant filter right here. So the cutoff and the formant are changing over two bars. They go up and down. And it makes it kind of sound like vocal. In my opinion, that sounds pretty cool. Like the chorus also makes it sound like that. So I have the, action that's like. So we have that, we also have these ice sound effects just for, uh, I don't know, feeling, I guess. They go well together, the shiver sound effect. That sounds like ice breaking, kind of, but whatever. Um, then we get this arp that comes in at the, the intro. Oh wait. This is the melody right here. Not the melody, I guess the, the arc. It kind of gives some cool pauses, I guess. Um, uh, then there's these cool things that are supposed to kind of give off an icy vibe to the track. Um, all right, that's it, I think. Oh, there's also the reverse sample and that with the it goes the it goes kick and then on the second beat these reverse sound things come in and then it hits the snare and it sounds really cool actually let me turn on the rest of the percussion the percussion in this track i really like it Um, all right, then right here the last four bars of the intro we get this fading in the uh, the voice Actually, no, that's the chords uh, Sir automation here Actually, I don't think so. Uh, wait, no, there is Never mind there isn't <laughs> That's the main sound the main melody I guess of the song there is uh, this part the the, it makes it sound like the chords are shivering, which I, I really like. And uh, in the build up, we just have, you know, just just that with this riser and uh, this riser and this riser. It's just classic stuff. And uh, we have this sound, which is chimes, which I reversed. And that sounds pretty cool and icy and so uh, I also introduced this on um, uh, this this pattern which is um th which is the voice sound but I exported it because it was just blowing up the CPU whenever I played it so it just it just needed to be frozen so um I left it here. I chopped it up a little bit. There's a, I think it's dotted half note, um, or or it's either dotted half note or dotted eighth note um, delay. I forgot which, but it makes it. It sounds pretty cool with it, and I really like the way this voice sounds when it plays the same melody as the chords, which I did, but at different LFO rates. But it is playing the same melody if I. <laughs> So that's that and there's this little plexing right here that gives I don't you can't really even hear that um but before so over time this chord these chords they kind of they get filtered uh, into the higher frequencies
and then the drop comes. Uh, what's different about the drop? Not much, really. Uh, or what's new about the drop? We have these things right here, or the claps, which kind of accent some of the chord hits that you that we want. Um, so as you can see right here, they correspond with these first two kind of slam things. I don't even know the kind of impact points. And then right here, you see these two chord stabs line up with these two claps, and then this lines up with this. It kind of just accents it. It makes it sound more abrasive. And then we see the um, the sixteenth notes happen here as well as here, and then it just works out. And then just like things just come in and out, we got this. And then we got this. Um, it's really similar to what we've already heard right here. We just got the, the beat going on. Let me turn on the side chain. Don't really remember which one it is, but we can, we can. All right, so this is what the voice sounds like in the, um, in the drop. It had this time the voice has the shiver thing going on, which then happens like again because of the delay, and I think that sounds really cool. Like when it, when the when it gets to this part, I really like that. That's that's my I think that's my favorite part of the song when it when the voice shivers or ah, that's what I like to call it because the track name but I really like that part uh, I think it sounds pretty cool uh, then we got the after drop which I pitched down the voice I didn't this is not the voice being played at a lower pitch it is the voice rendered out into a waveform and then lowered, which sounds cooler, I think. So, like, if I just play the voice, it, like, in a low... Actually, that's not even it. Uh, this. If I just play that, if I, like, lower the octave... It just do it just doesn't sound like that. It just sounds bad. But, like, if I take this, the rendered out version of it... And then just lower it, it does sound really cool. And then layered with the original voice, it sounds even cooler. And then later we get a harmonized version of that. Pitched up, I think it's five, five hundred cents. This five half steps up, this has no delay on it, so this is what it sounds like with the original. It brings more edge to it. I actually do not think it is perfectly harmonized, so I think most of the notes in this are actually off key, but they're kind of hidden in the back when I turn the, the, the deep one on. So with all the percussion and and the uh, voices, this is what it sounds like. And this is what it sounds like with everything it might like. All right, build up to build up to. Uh, we have the voice layered uh, differently this time. It sounds like this. So we have that, and we also have this chord. I don't know what this high cut is doing. I'm pretty sure it's from the chord. Yeah, it's definitely from the chords. So um, these chords are being uh, pitched down. By, by this and then rendered out into this and so this is kind of looming it gets louder and louder as the buildup goes on the, paired with the voice right here
And then it's just with the, the drums. It... All right, drop two this time. The voice and the chords are pretty much the only sound being played other than the bass and percussion, and they're getting pitched very hard. They're going down and up as this as this uh, automation is doing it. So it goes. All right. Actually, if any, if anyone was wondering what these automations are, this is the LFO speed, which was automating the LFO speed of the chords, which are right here before I muted them and rendered them out. So this is what is making the chords happen slower, or faster at like ratios like fourth. I mean, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note, and then eventually there's a thirty-second note right there. That's when it gets really fast, like uh, right here. The the da -da -da. And the one thing that is new, I guess, in sound-wise in this drop is this growl right here. Which is, uh, this. Oops. Uh, that growl is pretty cool. This is the best one, I think. That's, that one sounds cool if you pay attention to it in the, in the full context. And then that's basically it for sounds I used and how I made them, I guess. Uh, the outro is just the bass playing with the voice and these cold sound effects. And uh, that sh that shivers. Yep, all this is shivers. Um, hope you liked it. I guess. I don't know if you want more. I don't know. I just did this for fun, kind of. Uh, yep. So that shivers. <laughs>